So as, as long as you're engaged in denial or delusion around your issues of addiction, you can't really deal with codependency because, believe me, nobody wants to grow up if they can possibly get out of it. Addictions are primary illnesses. I believe codependency is the underlying problem. But you have to treat these as primary and treat them first. Not all codependents are addicts, and not all addicts are codependents, however. Some codependents have such massive issues around control, they never indulge addictions because they don't want to go that far out of control. So they're just control, they're control freaks. You have to get them to stop controlling before you can treat codependency. It's like they got a control addiction. Negative control is when you give yourself permission to control another person's reality or tell them how they should look, like how they fat they should be, how thin they should be, what they should dress, what they should look like, what their hair ought to be, and all that sort of thing. Negative control is when you tell other people what they should be thinking, what they should be feeling, and what they should be doing or not doing. I mean, if you can't own your own reality, for sure own somebody else's and make them do it in the interest of your comfort, right? And safety. If I can tell you who you're supposed to be, I can be safe over here. It also goes, I don't know who I am, therefore I have to control who you think you are in order to be who I want to be because you determine who I am. But what's positive control? There's an action to that. Yeah, controlling yourself. Determine your own reality. Another issue right here has to do with resentments. Re resentments is about wanting somebody who hurts you sufficiently punished. You know, you want them to suffer all the pain they've not caused you. You know, if I'm going to grow up, what's going to happen is I'm going to take charge of my life. Do you know, as I take charge of my life, my resentments diminish proportionately? So I don't have to resent you. I can let you go. I can do a third step on you and let you go. You know, being you is sufficient punishment is my attitude. <laughs> being me is sufficient punishment. Believe me. You don't have to get even with me. Being me is sufficient. The issue of unmanageability are intimacy issues. Intimacy happens when one person shares the reality with another and another is there to receive it. It's real simple. And you can be physically intimate, you can be sexually intimate, you can be intellectually intimate, you can be emotionally intimate. Physical intimacy is about hugging and holding and all that sort of thing. That's non-sexual. Sexual intimacy is about sexual contact and increasing stimulation and increasing tension and release of tension. It's called sexual intimacy. Intellectual intimacy is about sharing thoughts, and I'm being very intellectually intimate with you now. I'm telling you who I am and my thoughts. And you can be emotionally intimate. That's about sharing emotions. In intimacy, one person has to be there to share, and the other person has to be there to receive. That's simple, right? Except you can't do that if you don't own your reality. What are you going to share if you can't own it? All you're going to do is share how the other person's a jerk and how you'd like them to change is what you share, and that's not positive intimacy. You have to be able to know what your reality is in order to share it. Do you know that you have to know what your reality is in order to hear it? And you have to have boundaries to do either, and you have to have esteem, enough esteem of yourself to share and receive the reality of who somebody else is. We also get into spirituality issues. Now, I believe... Most people confuse spirituality with religiosity. Religion is about man and power and rules and who's going to win and control. Spirituality is not about that at all. Spirituality is about embracing reality. And what is reality? Reality is about who we are. And what are we? Well, we are perfectly imperfect is who we are. And I think spirituality happens whenever we are about sharing who we are with another and they are there to hear us without judgment or trying to get us to change it. That's why spirituality happens very little in dysfunctional relationships. Why? We don't want to hear who the other person is. And we have to suffer the consequences of their reality. Therefore, we get into trying to change all that in the interest of making ourselves comfortable. But what we lose is intimacy and spirituality with that person. You follow that? Spiritual, spirituality is about being in a relationship with a power greater than self and external to the self that provides guidance, solace, and serenity. Do you know that when we can't own who we are as perfectly imperfect, we can't have spirituality? Because spirituality happens when somebody shares the reality of who we are, who they are, and somebody is there to listen without judgment. It happens in trust at meetings constantly. 
That's like, for me, going to a 12-step meeting is like going to church. At least the way I think church ought to be. And spirituality happens, which is the experience of pain-filled joy or joy-filled pain that heightens intensity and awareness of the other person and yourself and what a miracle you are. You cannot do that when you can't own your own reality and get comfortable with the fact that you are perfectly imperfect and you can't get out of it, and so is everybody else. <laughs>